Is it possible to have spiritual growth without seva? Well, if you understand what seva really is, then it's a crucial part, an inextricable part of your spiritual growth. Why? What is spiritual growth? What is, when we talk about attaining enlightenment, talk about attaining samadhi, what is it that happens? Well, what happens is we become one with the divine. We have that experience of oneness with the creator and with the creation. And in the experience of oneness, we love. So when you fall in love, you experience a sense of oneness with the one you've fallen in love with. The minute you experience that sense of oneness, the minute you love, what do you do? You serve. So if your loved one is in bed sick, what do you do? You bring them fresh squeezed orange juice, you make them soup, you come, you rub their feet, you make sure they're warm, right? Now nobody, nobody has to say, oh, be a good humanitarian, oh, do some seva. It comes automatically when you love. If your child, if your parent, if your spouse wants something, needs something, we do it. And interestingly, even when they don't want or need it, we still do it. When you're in love, what do you do? You make them breakfast in bed. You bring them the things that they like. Even they're not sick. You just wake up and you think, Achachalo, today I'm going to make them their favorite thing. Today I'm going to give them a back massage. Today, this is service. Service is what stems out of love. Seva is service. And it is that which is deeply connected with our spiritual growth because if there's not love, there is no spiritual growth. Love is a crucial ingredient. You cannot grow a plant if you don't have sunshine, if you don't have water. They're crucial ingredients. In our spiritual growth and awakening, love is a crucial ingredient. Doesn't matter who you love, because if you really love what you're loving is God. God, through loving your family, through loving your colleagues, through loving creation, through loving the trees in your backyard, through loving your pets, I mean, it really doesn't matter what you love. As long as you love really deeply. As I was saying earlier today, if it's the physical form only that you're attached to, it's lust. If all you're attached to is form, it's lust. If we really love, we're connected to essence, we're connected to spirit. That's what I love when I love. It's not, oh God, I love your fingernails. Oh God, I love your kneecaps. What we really love is essence. And what that essence is, is divine. So service is the most natural outcome of love. But here's what's interesting also. It's a crucial component even not necessarily as an outcome, even as a way of getting there. Because what happens with seva is, seva is the experience of understanding. I'm just a tool. It's not my will. It's God's will. 
In most ashrams, Paramartha Nikathan is actually unusual in many ways, but one of the ways we're unusual is that if you said, I want to do seva here, chances are the type of seva that we would have you do is things on a computer, professional work. Most people in most places, seva is things like cleaning toilets. That's the seva, if you go to most ashrams, even you don't say, I want to do seva. Most places have a rule, you must do seva. And the seva that in most places you have to do is the lowest, lowest level stuff. You're cleaning toilets, you're washing dishes, you're sweeping the floor, you're mopping the floor. Why? It's not that they can't bring in people the way that we do to do those jobs. It's that doing the lowest of the lowest work is actually what helps us remove the ego. Because we all think that we're better than what we're doing. And this is true for everyone ranging from a male clerk to a CEO and everyone in between. Doesn't matter what your job is. Everyone believes that they've got a higher calling, a more important calling than what they're doing. And this is the game of the ego. And this is why in most places where you go for spiritual growth, what they're going to say is, clean the toilets. Wash the dishes. Scrub the floor. Because what the seva does is humbles us. It helps us understand we're just tools. Not my will, thy will. And the last, last part of this is in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna speaks so much about karma yoga. He talks about three different yogas, three different ways of connecting with God, attaining enlightenment, having spiritual growth. Bhakti yoga, the path of devotion. Gyan yoga, the path of knowledge. And karma yoga, the path of action, which is seva. They're just different ways of talking about the same thing. It's that which I'm doing selflessly. That which I'm doing for the goal of Union. Your seva may be help this person. But that's not really what it's about. What it's really about is a purification of yourself. And what Lord Krishna explains so beautifully is that all three of these yogas actually take you to exactly the same place. And they're not even actually separate. We think of them as separate. But they overlap in the way that I began because if you love, you serve. So you could begin with bhakti yoga, but if your bhakti is real, if your love is real, you're going to serve. And if your love is real, you're going to want to know more about the loved one. You're going to want to learn more and more. When you fall in love, what do you do? You stay up all night long. What did you want to be when you grew up? What's your favorite color? Where did you go to school? Silly things. But we just, we're, we're unquenchable, insatiable. We want to just know, tell me more, tell me more. Why? Because we love. So you can begin with love, begin with devotion. You can begin with gyan yoga. Begin by learning, begin with wisdom, but the more we learn, the more we love. This is, in Indian, in Indian marriages, most of the Indian marriages are arranged. In the West, it's love marriages, you meet someone, you fall in love, you get married. Here, mostly it's arranged marriage. So the gyan, the knowledge, comes before the love usually. You can't love someone when you don't even barely know them. Slowly, 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 they get to know each other. And love blooms. 
And then again, of course, service is the most natural byproduct. But you could also begin with service. Through serving, you slow, if you're doing it purely, if you're able to overcome the ego that says, I have a higher calling. If you're able to overcome that and understand that what your calling is, is to connect with God. What your calling is, is to love God. This is just a way of purifying your ego. Neither seva nor sadhana brings God. Many times people think through sadhana I will achieve God, that somehow God will be happy with my sadhana and come. But Pooja Swamiji reminds us all the time that's not how it happens. God is there, the sun is shining, but our windows are so dirty that we can't see. What sadhana does, what seva does, is it cleans the windows so that we can see. It's not that either of them brings God. Just like sun salutations don't bring the sun. It's there. It's just our windows are dirty. So through the service, as we become purified, we love more. We may not love the thing that we're serving. I mean, I could be cleaning toilets. It doesn't mean I'm going to fall in love with a toilet. Washing dishes, I'm not going to, you know, fall in love with my hand soap, with the dishwasher. But through the service, as I purify myself, as I purify my ego, as I purify this ignorance, I'm able to just love more in general. So the love in me blossoms. There's your bhakti. And then, of course, when I love, I want to learn more. So all three of these go together.